<laughs> All right, so this video was supposed to be just how wonderful it is to go see Alhambra and Granada, but we made so many mistakes that we decided we need to change what our video is about and instead help you avoid some of the mistakes that we made when we wanted to go see Alhambra and Granada. Now we did try to see different videos and prepare ourselves to go see kind of the city of Granada, which Alhambra is in, but I guess we just missed some of the really more practical things like how to get about a little bit easier, tips for where is a good place to park and how long does it take to see certain things and how best to go about seeing them. So we wanted to help you avoid these mistakes and so we have decided to make this video the five major mistakes that we made trying to see Alhambra and, and Granada and how the tips that you can take away to avoid the stress and the cost perhaps costly mistakes and just so that you can actually enjoy seeing more or seeing it in a nice a better way so this has become a series because we have made a few mistakes and so we're going to put out a couple of videos about some of the places that we have gone to see the mistakes we've made and how you can avoid them so i hope you gain so much from this so that when you go to granada that you can go and just have a peaceful wonderful beautiful time I, instead of having us just talk to you at the camera we want to tell you these mistakes and these tips while showing you the beautiful granada and alhambra so enjoy <music> Number one, you can't see Granada and Alhambra on the same day. This is probably the biggest mistake that we made during our whole trip to Granada, but we want to give you our tip to avoid this mistake. If you have only one day, choose one location, Granada or Alhambra. We know it's tempting to fit in as much as you can when you don't have as much time as you'd like, but in the end, pushing yourself too hard to see as much as you can as fast as you can misses the point. Slow down and really enjoy the places you're seeing. Take time to make fond memories. Mistake number two, don't park on a hill. We parked at the top of a hill in Elbethan. Like most mistakes, this started off as a great idea. It had an amazing view of Alhambra and Granada. We found free parking and it allowed us easy access down into Elbethan's historic streets. It also meant that at the end of the day, we had to climb all the way back up the hill after already climbing up to Alhambra in the morning and walking around all day long. Our tip to avoid this mistake? If you're seeing Alhambra, then you should park in the Alhambra parking lot early in the morning or as near as Alhambra as you can get. If you're seeing Granada, park centrally and definitely not on top of a hill. In both cases, this means you'll probably pay for parking. But after saving the money ourselves, we didn't feel the savings was worth the time and energy wasted climbing hills. Mistake number three, don't be too Canadian. And what we mean is, we took the rules way too seriously. When you look at the website, it seems very serious and very strict. One of the things it points out is that there are no backpacks allowed and no food except in designated areas. Now we learned after arrival that the rules were largely in place to accommodate large numbers of people in palaces and smaller spaces. Many people had backpacks on and the security guard simply told them to turn their bags to their front so they didn't knock into other people or objects while turning around. Food too was allowed in basically every outdoor space, which frankly is a lot of spaces. So our tip to avoid this mistake? Do bring a small backpack. Pack some non-perishable food and a water bottle. Don't worry about how much water it will fit as there are plenty of places to refill the bottles in Alhambra. Mistake number four, don't underestimate all the great things that Granada has to offer. Now we wrongly assumed that Granada was going to be more bite-sized like Cordoba. We assumed that we could see all that was worth seeing in Granada on our way to Alhambra. We couldn't have been more wrong. Our tip to avoid this mistake 
Look at all the great places in Granada and decide which of them you want to see most. This list should include great sites such as Granada Cathedral, neighborhoods like Elbethan, monasteries like the San Bernardo Monastery, restaurants, shops, and remember that there are many hills in Granada, so park lower rather than up on top of a hill. Mistake number five, and this is probably the biggest mistake you want to avoid. Don't underestimate the size of Alhambra. Alhambra is an ancient walled city. At one time, Alhambra was able to be completely self-sustaining in the event of a siege. Alhambra is the size of a theme park with a very similar layout. So planning your day there will really help save on necessary backtracking. Our tip to avoid this mistake? Wear very comfortable shoes and have a great plan to make your way through Alhambra. And we're gonna help you a bit with that. You're going to want to start your day in the Generalife Gardens. It is a beautiful walk and allows you spectacular views of both Granada and the Alhambra Palace Complex. It has its very own palace, which is very nice, but slightly underwhelming if you've already seen the Nasrid Palaces. After the Generalife, you want to make your way to the Alhambra Palace Complex. There are shops, restaurants, a mosque, church, and more gardens. Wander around and explore the grounds, imagining what it might have looked like 800 years ago. Now, before making your way to the Nasser Palace, save a little time to see the palace of Charles V. King Charles was a pretty big deal during his lifetime. The empire of Charles V, also known as the Holy Roman Empire, it was the largest European empire after the fall of Rome, and it would hold that title until Napoleon's conquest almost 300 years later. When you're done there, go to the Nasrid Palaces. Now these require additional tickets and we would recommend seeing them in the mid-afternoon. It is primarily indoors with many courtyards and gardens. There's a lineup to enter for ticket holders and it begins letting people in precisely on time. Be sure to be in that lineup just before your time slot, if not before. In our opinion, the Nasser Palaces are the most beautiful part of Alhambra, and it, the extra cost is well worth it. seeing the Nasrid Palaces, you'll have a short walk back to the Al Kazaba Fortress. Many of the stairs, battlements, walls, and of course the tower are not designed for people with mobility issues, children with no sense of self-preservation, or for people who are afraid of heights. The views from the tower and the walls are unbelievable, and the fortress is in such amazing shape considering its age.
When you're done at the Alcazaba, you can take the south exit into Granada for dinner in the Arab Quarter, or you can walk back to the main entrance to get back to your car. We want to tell you the one thing we did right. We went in the springtime. Going to Granada in April means less heat and less people. School lets out in late June in Spain, and most of the Northern Hemisphere, which means summer vacations haven't started yet. This means that far less people are out and about in this tourist destination in Spain. According to the Weather Network, the average April daytime temperature in Granada is 16.3 degrees Celsius, but it was in the mid-20s when we visited. By comparison, the average daytime temperature in July is 30.1 degrees Celsius, but it can easily reach 40 plus Celsius. Many of these buildings are well over 500 years old, so don't expect air conditioning. Want to hear more about coming to Spain during the spring? Check out our last week's video. We hope that you have a great visit to Granada, whether you're coming to Alhambra or the city itself. Remember to like and subscribe to this video, and as always, keep joining us every further mile.